use context. Context is such a great and beautiful alternative to prop drilling and just something that we can use. I mean, I did another video on prop drilling. I think prop drilling is super easy and simple and you should use it for simple cases. But when you need to have more global variables kind of moving across different kind of pages and sort of different components that sort of are not necessarily the same tree, but sort of more horizontal, context is great and comes in handy. Use context is not going to be drilling. It's more so you're going to be reading it anywhere it is, but you will need to set it in certain areas, but it will change globally. That's what makes context so easy. There are some downsides I'll talk about in this video. So wait till the end to talk about that and how to solve those. But for now, let's get right into context. All right. So let me show you an example of what we're going to do. I did the same example in prop drilling, which is very simple. We have basically a parent page a nested component and then a double nested component, which really, which is really a grandchild. This component two is only imported inside component one, not in the parent to show you an even more complex example. And default is a context variable called name context. And all the way at the bottom, I'm going to change this state globally. So there you go. See if I refresh, I hit the grandchild state. It changes the state all the way up above, not through prop drilling, but through context. And if I change the page, to home, it's maintaining its state, which is great. Now, the only thing is it won't maintain its state if it's if the page is refreshed. And that's another issue. That's a general problem with React that everything gets reset. But at least it carries over even inside of Next. If you use the link component, it'll carry over back and forth. Once you refresh the page, you lose that context. But for now, let's get started and show you how it goes across. If you guys like React, CSS, Next.js, animations, full stack development, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Okay, now I've cleaned up my page and there's no context created. So the first thing you want to do is create some sort of context. Now, the thing is you could create multiple sort of contexts. So you don't have to create one and be used across, but it just has to be one and then you have to wrap around the components. But for now, I'm going to use one master one. So what we need to do is create um, a file. I mean, this is how I do it, at least for one, at least for this one, appcontext.js. So we're going to create a file called app context, which is going to be served as a global context. Again, you could do it multiple. And then we want to import create context from React. And we want to create a const app context create context. So we just want to give it a variable, a way to, you know, utilize this way of creating context. Okay. So now what we did, we created a file called app context, and this is going to allow us to create context for this app. Now we're going to import use state and create context. Any, so you have use context and create context. Anywhere where you need to use the context, you have to import use context. And if you're going to create context, you have to import create context. You don't have to import both. So let's go ahead in and let's first import our app context. All right, great. So now we have the app context. Let's create some default context. OK, now the thing is, it's easy to create variables. But what we want to do is be able to create state, change the context through state. Right. So you're basically going to hold context and also create the ability to change state. Well, first, let's go ahead and create um, the, the default state. So we're going to say const. I'm just creating some default state. So name context now. You don't have to do this. You don't have to create state. I just know that usually we want to change um, context easily and we need to create state out of that. Otherwise, if you don't need to change it globally, you don't need to use it as state. So we'll just give it a default. All right. So I've created again. This could be whatever you want to call it. I'm just calling it name context. So I know that, oh, this is the context kind of value. So now what we want to do is Let's go ahead and pass these guys as props. But first, we need to wrap the entire tree with the app context provider. So what we're going to do is dot provider. OK. All right, so let's save this. So basically, we're wrapping this into app context provider, but we need to put the values that we want to pass. So basically, the value is the name context 
And I also want to send over the setter, the callback that's going to change the context, okay, state. We What we've done now is we've created state, default state, and we've passed that as an um, variables inside of the app context. How do we read this, right? I'm, this is just where I'm setting it up inside of the app, but what about inside of the component? And let's say that we want to read, right, this context. We have we already have it here as default, right? It's a global context. So now inside of index, what I want to do is go ahead and import the app context, okay? So we have to go ahead and import it. So I'll say import app context right so we're, we're we're importing that that app context that's wrapped as a provider and then we're giving it right here a value i'll write this again const context equals use context app context okay so what we're saying here is we want to be able to we're just grabbing the use context right which is a hook of react and the context we want to use is the app context that we've created as the you know as a provider all the way at the top and this is you could call this whatever you want i'm just calling context for ease of use you could change that to app context let's say it was just like a user context or you can make this sort of relevant to whatever the context refers to now what we want to do is say on the parent page on a head one right h1 I have a context value and I'm going to read it context dot name context. Now, if you see here, I'll refresh. Look at that. Default is there. That's all the way from the parent. If I change that, let me close this out. If I change it over here, you'll see it went ahead and changed. Right now, the cool thing here is with prop drilling, we have to sort of pass it down as a prop, right? All the way. You can go see that video on react prop drilling. Here, we're not even, we're not importing the prop into the component. We're importing the context, right, all the way at the top. But again, it is a little verbose because we do have to kind of map the variables a little bit and map the value names. But we're saying context dot name context because that is what we want to get. Now, if we want to be able to change state, we could just do the context dot set name context and now we can change that right so we could create a whole object i mean you could see this can go really really wide and you could create a, a big object with a bunch of values and be able to change those across but for now let's just continue on with reading the context inside of the next component so let's go inside of um, component one and let's read it there so let's go into component one which is nested inside of the index file right let's go inside of index and now same thing we're going to import the app context and we want to use context equals use context okay so now we have that context there and right here the same place right just like here i'll just show you you want to say context dot name context right there it goes it it already fixed itself great again as you see we're not importing props so now let's do the same thing with component two we're going to go ahead and import the app context create that value const context use context and now we're going to go ahead and just same thing context dot name context there it is so there it is right now if you go to the top right if this changes let's go to the parent app you'll see it change globally right so if we change this to omar there it goes it's all over now check this out if we flip between pages it holds its context unless I hard refresh the page. And that's another issue that reloads the entire app when it comes to SPA, single page applications. But um, it's a little better than prop drill in this case because it'll carry instead of resetting the prop, uh, instead of resetting the value. Now, how do we change this? As we did in the prop drilling video, we were able to change the state all the way from the grandchild. So I'm going to do the grandchild example because that's always the hardest example but it's the same concept from any component you decide to do this in. So if you go to the co um, component two, let me show you how you'll go ahead and change that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a button, button, right? And we're gonna say update context state, all right? 
it does nothing right now. Actually, let me change it to default just so it's a little you know clear that you know it's to this default, right? Default value. This button does nothing. So let's go back here and let's say when the button is clicked, we want to be able to change the context. So we're going to need to create another setter function, kind of similar to what we did at the parent and prop drilling. Let's create the function first so we don't run into any errors. So we'll say function change name context. But we have in that context the one called set name stick context, right? If you go back, we pass this one over here, which basically is this guy. So let's go ahead and say context, right? It's from here, this guy. It's the object from there, context. Set name context. We'll say Omar. OK, so all we're doing is we're running a function that basically is calling the context that's actually changing the state of the other of the other variable. That's all. Um, and that's pretty much it. So then it will change globally. OK, so now if we say in this button, if we say on click. Change name context. Let's see if this worked. So if we refresh. You click here, it changed the context globally. The difference is with context, we didn't prop drill. We didn't send these props all over. We just are reading the context. Of course, we. the downside is you do have to read the context in every component, which is kind of verbose. But you don't need to sort of worry about like where the parent in some sense can. In this case, this function, if it was prop drilling, would have had to have lived all the way in the parent. And here, it can live anywhere. And you could change the state, the context from anywhere where it looks like we're creating, but we're not really creating context there. We're still reading the context. We're only reading the set state callback function inside of the context that allows us to change it. So there we go. You could change state. And again, to reiterate, if you look at the header, in my header, I'm using the link component of Next.js, which is like its default routing. Now, when you use the default routing, it'll make it will not reload the entire app. It'll keep the state. So here I am at the parent. I change the context. If you click about and back and forth about home context isn't changing. But if you do a hard refresh, it does change. And that's something we always have to deal with inside of React, the reloading of state. But that's been how to change context, how to set context globally. And it can get kind of fun. You got to play around with it. There's going to be use cases where you have to get a little more complicated. And when it comes to, say, like theme variables or user context, it comes in handy to be able to have a set of values that, you know, you can sort of rely on throughout the throughout the app. Now, you can't rely on it for hard refresh. Now, when hard refresh, you do have to write other further function to be able to make sure it's it's there. But generally, you know, it'll it'll maintain its state across globally. And it's good to have that, especially when it comes to like logins and different things like that. So I hope you guys enjoy this. If you guys like Next.js, CSS, React, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.